Okay, so welcome to part two of this review of a 2018 SANDF 24-hour ration pack, or rat pack. And this is menu number four, also called day four. And in part one, we did some background of the ration, opened it up, took a look at all the contents, and did a review of breakfast. So in part two, we're going to go ahead and take a look at lunch and dinner. And one thing that's interesting to note about this is that We've already done the breakfast, but to show how well rations like this are packed, I took all the lunch and dinner components and put them back in the box, and it almost fills the box up. So that already is kind of impressive, but that doesn't even include all the, quote, extras. These are the fuel tabs, the matches, the extra creamers and sugars, the extra gum, the water purification powders, and the Super C tablets. So as you can see, if you put that in there, the box is more than full. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at lunch. All right, and here's what we're having for lunch. We have the 300 grams of chicken, pasta, and vegetables. And since this does have pasta, I figure we don't really need a starch for it. So we're going to use this larger 300 gram entree for lunch. And then for dinner, we'll use the smaller 200 gram beef curry beans, along with the 150 grams of Samp. We're also going to have the lactose-free nutritional shake. I wasn't sure where to put that, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. But I figured it'll give us two beverages for this one. We also have the isotonic sports drink pineapple flavor. And then to have something using hot water, we had the coffee for breakfast and we're having the tea with dinner. So we're going to have the beef soup in a cup for lunch. We also have a couple Super C tablets and the Stimerol Air Rush menthol gum. And then some stuff that's kind of going to be shared between lunch and dinner. We have the small pack of biscuits, probably going to use two for lunch and two for dinner. The nut butter, the processed Gouda cheese, the fruit chutney, the tomato sauce, and a pack of salt just in case we need that. So I do have two things I'm a little bit concerned about with this one. The nut butter definitely has a leak. It's very oily. Uh, there was some oil and there was some powder in the box when I opened it up. Not exactly sure where the powder came from. I think it was a creamer. Didn't seem to be any big deal. But there was the uh, oil coming off the nut butter. Uh, not a huge deal, but just kind of a mess. And then the other thing too, I did part one yesterday and I packed everything else away. And I noted the outer bag for the chicken pasta and vegetables had a little stain on it. I'm guessing that came from the nut butter, but for some reason when I opened this today, just one day later, there was a really bad smell coming off of the, of the whole ration, and I think I narrowed it down to this bag. It's sort of like a cross between bleach and uh, like a, a dirty baby's diaper. Um, it could just be because it has the um, these little stains on it that are from the oil, and maybe it's just a matter of... I don't, I don't know why it didn't smell like that yesterday when it was sealed up in the in the box, but for whatever reason, about 15-20 uh, hours later, it just it smells pretty bad. And there doesn't appear to be any leakage in this retort pouch. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to explain that, and I hope this doesn't indicate that there's anything wrong with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and heat up the chicken, pasta, and vegetables in hot water. I hope everything's alright with that. And we'll get everything else plated and check it all out. Alright, since this ration didn't come with any utensils, I'm just using a standard brown MRE spoon. Let's go ahead and check out these biscuits, which are very nicely vacuum sealed. Let's see if we get a hiss out of this. Yeah, there was one, but it's pretty quiet. So one thing about this, I wouldn't mind seeing more biscuits. Just to, you know, they give you a pretty good amount of spreads. I mean, there really isn't anything to put them on. You know the biscuits? They, uh, they basically smell like clay. Like, um, you know, kids modeling clay. This is kind of an oaty sort of flavor. You can see they have the uh, Serac logo on there. The mountains in the MRE. Actually, it actually has a little bit of a sweetness to the smell. Almost like um, maraschino cherries. And the nut butter. This has peanuts, cocoa mass. I guess it's a chocolate. Hazelnut paste. Emulsifier. And um, I mentioned in the first part that these uh, retort pouches, they're, they're kind of flimsy. They, they're less than a year old and they're already delaminating. That's something you usually see in MREs when they're getting to be like 20 or 30 years old. You'll see a lot of delamination. And for some reason, these are delaminating within months. And apparently it's just the uh, the grade of uh, retort pouch they use. Actually, you can, I mean, this is, yeah, it's just completely coming apart. So 
So it made me a little bit nervous to um, to need this because it basically destroys the lamination. But of course we're eating it, so it doesn't really matter. Let's check out the uh, nut butter. Wow, that smells really good. So uh, obviously it's got the hazelnut in it, so it's going to be similar to um, Nutella. It smells really good though. And I am going to reserve these other two biscuits for dinner. So we'll just take a look at these two. And we'll check out the Gouda cheese spread. I don't really need this. I don't know if it needs to be kneaded or not. Yeah, it's a little clumpy there. I'm not really getting too much of a smell other than plastic off of that. Maybe when we do dinner, I'll, I'll try and knead the package a little bit, see if it looks a little bit more appetizing. But there's our, our Gouda processed cheese spread. And then we have a couple of drinks. We have our isotonic sports drink, pineapple. And it says it makes 250 milliliters. And I don't know if there's a tear much on it or not, but I was able to get into it. Let's see what it smells like. It's sort of a, it actually kind of looks like um, lemon lime drink. It's sort of a greenish yellow color and not really, not really much smell coming off there at all. Then we have 200 mils of water. And let's see what the drink looks like. Yeah, I'm smelling a little bit of pineapple coming off of that. Yeah, it's sort of like a, a pared down version of the tropical or exotic drinks and some of the other rations, as those tend to have an essence of pineapple in them, but this is just pineapple. I'm going to go ahead and put that into a smaller glass. All right, the lactose free nutritional shake, banana, also takes 250 mils. And in this case, I'm going to actually put the, uh, the powder in first. I don't know if that'll make it any easier or not. This does not seem to have tear notches on it. So let's we'll have to make our own. Yeah, and of course it's all over the place too. Let's see what we got for a smell. Well, there's not really much of a smell at all coming off of there. It basically smells like, like flour. I'm guessing when we put the water in, it'll activate the banana smell. And then we'll see. But as I'm stirring it, the, the uh, banana smell is wafting through the air. It's that kind of standard artificial candy banana smell. All right, I was going to go ahead and transfer that into a mug, but since it makes so much, I guess I'll just leave it in this large glass. And since this is a nutritional shake, let's go ahead and take a look at the nutrition facts. If you can read those on this kind of shiny foil. And next we'll take a look at the beef soup in a cup. It doesn't really give a lot of information on here. It gives the ingredients, but it doesn't uh, give you nutrition facts, and it also doesn't tell you how much water to add. So I'm going to go with a smaller amount just so we can really taste this. That's interesting. It basically it's a powder. It looks a lot like the, uh, the dairy shake powder we just opened up, except for the fact that it's got the corn in it and some Little flakes of, I don't know if it's oregano or some kind of seasoning. But it smells a lot like an instant ramen soup, except for the fact that it doesn't have any pasta. Kind of smells like the, the flavoring packet for one of those. Go ahead and add some water and see what this is like.
All right. It's kind of looking like maybe I would have been better off putting the water in first. It was a little bit hard to mix. And basically what you get with the amount of water I put in is uh, basically like a, a thick broth. It's kind of white. Strangely enough, it has almost no odor coming off of it at all. It basically smells like hot water in a canteen cup. I mean, I don't know if it'll have a little bit more taste to it than it has smell. Not terribly exciting, but it'll give you a little uh, something warm to put in your stomach. And that just leaves us with our chicken pasta and veg, which has been heated up in some really hot water. And a good sign was that um, in the water I didn't see any indication that anything leaked out of this. So it doesn't appear as though whatever that smell was coming from had anything to do with this retort pouch. Let's see what this is like. Looks and smells quite a bit like the U.S. chicken with noodles and vegetables, which is basically the exact same thing. And let's go ahead and check it out. Yeah, it looks a lot like a uh, basically like a chicken noodle stew kind of thing, like the uh, U.S. version, which is basically a chicken noodle soup, but in a, a thicker version. All right, and that overall looks relatively good. It has sort of an odd um, congealed clumpiness to it that almost, uh, well, you can make your own judgments. It almost kind of has a little bit of a uh, sort of like a barf kind of appearance. I don't know if that's cheese or, or what, but um, one issue with this is that the 200 gram entrees, they come in this uh, little cardboard sleeve here, and we're going to be having the beef curry for dinner, but it actually gives you all the different ones, and it gives you their ingredients, which is nice. But unfortunately, the pasta, chicken, and vegetable isn't on here. That one came in this envelope, which says nothing on it. And this retort pouch, which also doesn't give you any uh, specific information. So it seems a little bit like an oversight, but it is what it is. Uh, you can see we do have a lot of chicken in here. Some pretty good chunks of chicken. Uh, I see carrots. Obviously, there's the pasta. And then just this sort of weird clumpiness that I don't know... It looks like something like, I don't know, clotted in there or something. It must just be something in the ingredients because this is not even a year old. It's definitely within its best use by date. So it doesn't seem like it should indicate an issue, any kind of a problem. But let's try it out. Mm, that's good. It's a, it is very much if you've had the uh, chicken noodles and vegetables in the US MREs, which has been a staple for decades, you basically had this. It does, seems like it has a little bit less of the vegetables. It seems like it only has the carrots. No, actually, I see a pea over there. So it's kind of standard chicken noodle soup fare. With the peas and carrots. And the chicken seems to be good. It's definitely not an over-processed kind of chicken. It just looks like chicken. Yeah, it's a real chicken. Uh, kind of flavorful. The chicken itself doesn't have a ton of flavor, other than tasting like chicken, obviously. But the sauce is, is pretty salty, not overly, but, um, wow. Okay, <laughs> there was big chunks of chicken, look at this. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like that in a ration before? That is a big chunk of chicken. And, and there's other good sized ones in here too, it's not like it's, that's all you're getting. And let's see, the pasta does seem to be on the mushy side. That's obviously something that can happen in a retort pouch. This isn't terribly old, so... It's not really because it's been in the pouch, but it does seem to be... It basically feels like it's been overcooked, like you just left it in a little bit too long. But it doesn't really detract from the meal. It's a very good entree. And a nice size, 300 grams. I don't see any need to add the salt. You could, obviously you could salt it up a little bit. If you had some hot sauce with you, you could put that in it. But it's got a lot of flavor. It's pretty good. And I think the fruit chutney... And you know, the tomato sauce, tomato sauce doesn't seem like it would go with this. And the fruit chutney just seems like it would go with that curry better. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually save these for the dinner. We will check them both out. Let's try this soup, though. Well, it's still hot, too. 
I'm going to get some of the, uh, basically like three or four kernels of uh, corn in here, or maybe not even that, but a little bit of corn, some little flakes of something, oregano or something. Definitely nothing too spectacular, but something to give you something warm and give you more nutrients. And, and it, luckily it does have a lot more flavor than it has smell. But um, it does have sort of a beef instant ramen soup kind of a taste. But there's something else too. It almost tastes a little bit like, um, like cardboard. Yeah, I wouldn't expect too much from this, and you don't really get too much from it. But it is, it is also uh, pretty salty. I'm going to try actually turning this into um, a chicken soup with one of these generous chunks of chicken. Let's see what this is like. Like a, a chicken beef soup. That's not bad, but it really just kind of adds some texture to it. I think this is the way to go. Eat the main by itself. And have the soup for some hot nutrients. Let's try this pineapple beverage. It's got kind of a day glow color, kind of like the US MRE drinks. Well, that's good, that's really sweet. I like stuff sweet. If you don't, you might want to add some more water to this, but considering out of the full 250 mils, it actually has a nice sweet uh, fruit kind of taste. It does, I guess, I guess I would say pineapple, artificial of course, an artificial pineapple taste. It's like a tropical fruit punch without all the other fruits, just the uh, pineapple part. But that's actually really good. And then we'll try, we'll just start with the, uh, the Gouda cheese. I'm going to take a little bite of the uh, cracker or the biscuit first. Yeah, I was going to say really no flavor to that, but it does have a, a little bit of like an aftertaste of, uh, like I said, a, a little sweetness. Um, to me, it kind of reminds me of like uh, maraschino cherries. It's a good conveyance for the uh, cheese and for other spreads. Yeah, not terribly interesting, but but pretty good. The Gouda cheese, it's, that's definitely different. I'm so used to the uh, canned cheddar cheese taste that it's strange to get something that is that is different. And uh, it's not bad. It's pretty mild, kind of understated. Um, I think I actually would actually prefer it to be the uh, the cheddar though. It's kind of kind of spongy here. I'm gonna really have to see if I can knead it and make it look, seem a little bit more like cheese rather than like a. Uh, you know, like a, a squishy ball. And the tastes go kind of strange together because of the uh, sweetness of the biscuit. Which brings us to the nut butter. And this should be a better combination because the uh, nut butter is definitely going to be sweet and there's that slight hint of sweetness among the uh, oat biscuit kind of taste. Yeah, that's really good. It's a definitely a step up from peanut butter. Once again, if you like sweet stuff, it is very similar to Nutella, maybe even a little bit more flavorful. Yeah, kind of trying it on its own too. It's really good just by itself, but it goes good with that um, that Odie cracker. I guess the last thing we have is this nutritional shake. which does have that artificial banana smell coming off of it, as I had mentioned. And surprisingly little taste. A little bit of a hint of uh, banana, and that's really about it. I think if I uh, get another one of these, I might go with a little bit less water just to make it a little bit more thick. But it's not a bad way to get some, some more nutrition. You know, I mean, that's the whole point of this stuff. It's not, I mean, obviously they do want it to taste good, but they want to get a lot of nutrition elements in you. And that does it while being kind of interesting. So all we have left is the gum and the Super C tablets. Since we're going to save the chutney and the tomato sauce for later. And since I already did the granadilla for breakfast, just to save some time, we're just going to go do the, uh, the only other one that's different. The rest of them are all granadilla. There was one orange and there's one watermelon. So let's try that one. A little different color, not surprisingly. Not really any smoke coming off of it. 
Mm, it's a pretty good taste to it. Mm, exactly tastes like watermelon. I was kind of expecting that standard artificial watermelon taste, kind of like the, the banana taste, but not really too much coming off, but it is good though. Yeah, a nice way to get some, some vitamin C. And we do have the gum, but I did try this with the breakfast and it's very strong. If you're, uh, it's not a bad idea to hold on to these until you're sick because it's uh, it's like having, it is Halls, made by Halls, and it's like Halls Mentholiptus. The uh, menthol is really, really powerful. So I'm not gonna bother with that just because I still need to finish this. But that was a look at lunch from the day four menu of the SANDF 24 hour wrap pack. And now let's finish up by checking out dinner. All right, and here's dinner. It does look like quite a few components here, but we are kind of borrowing some stuff from lunch. We do have the leftover biscuits, the leftover nut butter, and of course we have the fruit chutney and the tomato sauce again. But otherwise we have the beef curry beans and vegetable, 200 grams. The 150 grams of samp, something I've never had before. Gonna heat both of these up in some hot water. And we have the orange isotonic sports drink, a bag of black tea, another tube of the uh, Gouda cheese. First one wasn't really very good. I don't know if it's not good or if it's just the fact that it's uh, Gouda and I'm not really used to that. I'm used to the cheddar. We have a creamer and sugar for the tea, pack of salt, didn't need that for lunch, but you never know. And a couple more super C's. Both of these are granadilla and some more of the very strong menthol gum. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, here's our condiments and our gum and super C's. Biscuits, as I said, we only get this one package. It has four biscuits in it. And we did check out two of them for lunch. So um, you wouldn't necessarily have this for two meals if you ate the whole package at one time. But um, yeah, here's our, I guess, basically like an oat kind of biscuit. As I said in the lunch one, it kind of smells like um, clay, like a children's kind of a clay that they play with, with a little bit of sweetness, kind of like a maraschino cherries. And we have the Apparently, I believe it says Gouda processed cheese, and I'm actually going to um, heat this up in some water to see if it can make it a little bit more pliable. It's kind of hard to really knead it in this packaging, and it came out sort of rubbery. So just to make it a little bit more more pliable, I kind of heated it up a little bit. Let's see if that helped at all. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, not too much different, but the uh, top part wasn't really too warm, but uh, it did actually allow it to... Yeah, it's still kind of rubbery. Anyway, that's the cheese. And this package actually has a pretty good amount of the nut butter, so I do have more of that left over. And of course, like I said, with these four biscuits, you're not really... Um, getting a lot of things to put two tubes of cheese and a pretty big package of uh, nut butter on. It'd be nice to see a few more biscuits in there. But I suppose you can put the cheese also on the entrees if you need it. The orange isotonic sports drink takes 250 milliliters of water. We'll get that right here. And the uh, pineapple one I thought was really good. I actually really enjoyed that one. See what their orange is like. It looks orange. It kind of looks like um, crushed up Super C tablets, the orange ones. And it kind of has that sort of chemical, artificial smell. Like a, it smells like vitamin C, basically. And not unlike the uh, US orange sports drinks. Yeah, it smells quite a bit like the U.S. MRE orange beverage drinks. Not so much the carbohydrate electrolyte ones, but the, the regular ones. And kind of a nice orange smell coming up there. An artificial orange smell, of course, but that kind of goes with the territory. Let's just put this into a smaller glass. Very orange. And we have the tea. Black tea. Kind of nice, it's in this little top pouch. I always use that for something. This smells kind of like black tea. Nothing too surprising there. Not very strong smelling. And we'll 
not that steep. I'll probably try it as is and try it with some cream and sugar too. And really about all that's left is our entree, our samp, and our beef curry, beans and vegetable. And as far as ingredients go, the samp isn't terribly interesting. See the barbecue rice has a lot of stuff in it. The samp is just water, reconstituted samp, doesn't tell you what's in the samp, but it's samp, canola oil, and salt. The beef curry, beans, and vegetable is a little bit more of a standard kind of a ingredient list. But let's check out the samp. As I said, it's something I've never had before. Something like grits. Yeah, it's quite, quite lumpy. Smells very plain. Wow, that's different. Okay, so it's sort of like like grits or something like that, but it's um the corn is still kernels. It's pretty large kernels even. So that's it's pretty interesting. It seems like it's going to be pretty bland on its own. But there certainly doesn't seem to be any doubt that it's a corn-based dish. And I'm a little bit concerned about how much uh, between the 150 grams of samp and 200 grams of curry, if it's all going to fit in that tray compartment. And that smells good. It definitely has a, a curry smell to it. I'm going to smell the beef in there. It actually looks really good. And so there it is, this is the whole meal. It's not a ton of stuff, and the tray is looking a little bit sparse with that empty compartment. Could put the tea in there, but instead I'm just gonna throw the sugar and creamer in there just to kinda fill up the space a little bit. And let's go ahead and try this out. Let's get into the mains while they're still hot. And I do want to try the samp on its own because as I've mentioned, I've never had samp before. A little bit of gravy got in there, but I kind of see what that's all about before we uh, get into trying everything together. It's actually not too bad. Not much flavor as I was kind of expecting. It's, it's definitely pretty bland, but I actually kind of like the texture. I'm sort of surprised I do because I'm not really, really a big texture person, but I kind of like how it, um, it clumps up and you get those pieces of pieces of corn in there. It's actually interesting. I should have kept some separate, maybe try some with some salt on it or something. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. And the curry itself seems to be basically mostly beef, which is good to see. Uh, beef with some carrots in there and these uh, large beans. Let's try some of that on its own. Yeah, and I didn't really see anything about um, the uh, vegetables. I didn't realize right at the bottom, instead of putting it in all the ingredients at the bottom, it says vegetables, potatoes, and carrots. So you definitely do see both of those in there. And the sauce and beef is 35%. Butter beans is the beans that are in there, 10%, and vegetables, 10%. And that's good. It has a little bit of a little bit of a curry kick to it. Nothing overwhelming, but uh, tasty. Let's try it all together. Yep, that mix is really good with the samp. The samp doesn't really add anything flavor-wise, but it gives you some extra texture. Gives you a little bit of corn in there, and uh, obviously it's giving you your starch. It's actually really good. I don't really see any need to add anything. But we do have the tomato sauce, which I'm assuming is going to be like ketchup. Let's try a little bit of that. I don't want to mess this up if this isn't a good addition. It's really bright. Yeah, it pretty much tastes like a, you know, a ketchup. It's got a little bit of a, I don't want to say spice, it's not spicy, but a little bit of something in it. It's almost like a steak sauce. And, uh, Let's try that on there. It's okay. It almost makes it taste like a meatloaf with ketchup. It certainly doesn't need it, but it's it's not bad. The chutney seems like it's a little bit more of a, a natural. So try 
try some of that. I don't think it needs the salt. And once again, that adds a little, a little something. I don't think it necessarily needs. It's a little, a little bit on the sweet side. Mixes in with the heat pretty good. Let's try the tea while it's still hot. Mm, that's actually been steeping for a while. It's doesn't really taste like too much. It seems like a serviceable black tea. Try it with the creamer and sugar. Since we have them. Certainly changes the look. Yeah, I'm kind of like the coffee. It basically, just makes it taste like creamer and sugar. I'm gonna try a little bit of this extra cheese on here, just because that's something I didn't do. I don't think the cheese would really go with this, but it's worth a try. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm crazy about processed Gouda cheese. It didn't really do that much for me in the lunch menu. It's not, it's not bad, it's just something I'm not used to. When I bite into some uh, processed cheese spread in a ration, I expect it to be like the U.S. cheddar cheese. And I don't think I'm particularly a particularly huge fan of Gouda in general. It's a nice touch that to give you something different. Clean the palate with some of this, the orange drink. Mm, that's pretty good too. Uh, very artificial, at least it's artificial tasting as the USMRE ones, but uh, sweet and definitely orange. And I guess this will be our dessert, the nut butter on the biscuit. Which of course we already know is good because I had it for lunch too. That was about it. Overall, it was very good. Probably the most important thing in a ration is the mains, and they were very tasty. This, I was sort of surprised how good this goes with the samp. Uh, but this and the lunch with the chicken, pasta, and vegetables, they're both very good. Other than that, it's kind of a mixed bag of stuff. Basically what you need for 24 hours worth of nutrition. I think it works very well. And so that was a look at lunch and dinner from the day four menu of a 2018 SANDF 24-hour ration pack or rat pack. Once again, I want to send out a huge thank you to Steve1989 for sending this along for me. Otherwise, I don't know if I'd ever get a chance to try something like this. And also, of course, thank you for watching.